Hare Krishna. Welcome, Shrivats Prabhu, to the third session of our discussion on Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Previously, we have had two sessions and we have seen the first verse. We have seen the Anvai. Anvai is the connection of words and how we derive a meaningful translation. So we have seen that. Then we have also seen Srila Jiva Goswami's commentary and introductory verse. We have seen that last time. And Srila Jiva Goswami was first and foremost focusing upon the term Vidhu. Because our verse is Akhila Rasamrita Murtihi. Prasaramala Ruchi Ruddha Tarika Pali Kalita Shama Lalito Radha Prayan Vidhur Jayati. So Vidhu is the term which has two meanings. That is, the first meaning is Bhagavan Shri Krishna and the second meaning is the moon. And we have seen how all the other terms are actually adjectives. Akilara Samrita Murtihi, Rasamara Ruchi Ruddha Tarika Palihi, Kalita Shama Lalito, and Radha Prayan are all adjectives of which term? Vidhu. Yes. And Jayati is verb because in a sentence we require at least one verb. So that we have seen. So we see, we have seen two meanings of all the adjectives. One is in the Krishna Paksh pertaining to Krishna. One is in the Chandra Paksh pertaining to the moon. We have seen all of that. Okay. Then Srila Jiva Goswami had explained uh, four meanings of Viduhu. So these four meanings of Viduhu I hope you remember what are the four meanings of Vidhu. Can you recollect some of those meanings? Yes, Prabhu. So the first one is um, Khandayati Sarva Dukham. Yes. Which is, he destroys all suffering. Then Atikramati Sarvam Cheti. He supersedes everyone. Right. Vidadhati Karoti Sarva Sukham. He bestows all happiness and Sarvam Cheti. He bestows everything. Right. So these are the four meanings. Then we saw how actually in all these four meanings if we try to find out who is the highest pinnacle of you know, who is the personality who is the highest in all these four ways we will end up with only one personality. Who is that? Krishna. Krishna. And therefore, although uh the term Vidhu is mentioned in Amar Kosh as a general name of Vishnu. But actually then we found out that, oh no, Amar Kosh is mainly listing the names of whom? Of Krishna. Vishnu. And the Amar Kosh itself says Vasudevo Asya Janakaha. Right? That his father is Sri Vasudeva. So that was Srila Jiva Goswami was pointing out. Vasudevo Asya Janaka. His father is Vasudeva. Iti Adi Ukte. Etad Eva Sarvam. Jiva Goswami says all of these four meanings. We have seen the four meanings of Vidhu. That Vidhu Noti equal to Khandayati. Khandayati means he destroys Sarva Dukham. So he destroys all suffering. Vidhu Noti equal to Atikramati. He supersedes. Supersedes what? Sarvamcha. He supersedes everyone and everything. So these are first two meanings of the term Vidhu. The uh, other two meanings are Vidadhati. And Vidadhati equal to Karoti. He bestows. Bestows what? All happiness. And second meaning is uh, Vidadhati Sarva Sukham is the third meaning and Vidadhati Sarvamcha. And he bestows everything. Okay, so this is our, these are our four meanings of Vidhu that we have seen. So now 
we have to understand that in these four meanings, Srila Jiva Goswami has used two words, Vidhunoti and Vidadhati. Have you, can you see here? Vidhunoti mm -hmm. and uh, Vidadhati. Can you see? Huh? Yes, so, Vidhu, uh, first time he has defined Vidhu through one verb, which is what? Vidhunoti. And second time he has changed the verb, that is, what is the second verb? Vidadhati. Vidadhati. So, Vidhunoti and Vidadhati. These are the two verbs that he has used. Now, what is Vidhunoti and Vidadhati? These are two verbs. Now, Dhunoti is the original verb. In Vidhunoti, what is the original verb? Dhunoti. Dhunoti. And V is the uh, prefix. V means Visheshana, especially. Dhunoti means the, term, the verbal root Dhu, which is the verbal root here? Dhu. Dhu. So, V is the prefix, verbal root is dhu. And dhunoti means he washes out or he cleans. And vidhunoti specifically means khandayati, which means he destroys sarvadukham. Because when you add prefixes to verbs, the verbs take on a very different meaning. Huh. For example, I have told you that. Huh? For example, if you take the verb do, and then if you add prefixes, the meaning changes completely. Undo, redo, outdo, mm. right? Similarly, dhu, verbal root originally means to cleanse, to wash. Uh, but vidhunoti here takes on the meaning to destroy. Okay, mm. or vidhunoti also takes on the meaning to supersede. Mm. Uh. Then, the second verb is vidadhati. So once again, can you tell me which is the prefix here? The prefix is v. The prefix is v. And what is the verb here? Dadhati. Dadhati is the verb here. So v and dadhati combined to give vidadhati. Now question arises that which is the verbal root here? which is used in the term dadhati. So, in this dadhati, the verbal root is dha. What is the verbal root? Dha. Dha. So, dha is used in the sense of giving something. So, but v plus dha, Jiva Goswami says karoti. He does, he ensures something or he bestows something. That is sarvasukham. And Sarvam Cheti, he bestows everything. So there are two verbal roots. Now one is Dhu and one is Dha. And these two verbal roots he has used in forming one term that is Vidhu. What is the term? Vidhu. 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 So this much we have to understand. Now these four meanings, Srila Jiva Goswami is going to explain the Pramanas. What are the Pramanas in Shastra? for these four meanings. Alright? So, you have to keep the four meanings handy with you. What was the first meaning? Vidhunoti khandayati sarva dukham. So, just let's stop at that. Vidhunoti equal to what? Khandayati sarva dukham. He destroys all. Vidhunoti equal to khandayati. Okay. Destroys. Kim khandayati? Sarva dukham. Yes. What does he destroy? Sarvatukha. Oh, Sarvatukha. 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 Sarv
ninth chapter verse number 39 so i'll bring up that verse and we will see uh, the translation for that verse we will read that verse and we will see the translation for that verse so this is shri bhishma speaking his prayers so this is the verse which rishi goswami was pointing so please repeat after me विजय रथ कुटुंब आत तोत्रे विजय रथ कुटुंब आत तोत्रे धृत हय रश्मिनी तच्छ्री एक्षणीये धृत हय रश्मिनी तच्छ्री एक्षणीये भगवती रति रस्तु मे मुमूर्षोर भगवती रति रस्तु मे मुमूर्षोर यमिह निरीक्ष हतागता स्वरूपम yamih nirikshe hatagata swarupam yes so which line is shila jeeva goswami pointing us towards the last line the last line so last line yam ih nirikshe hatagata swarupam okay let's see the word for word uh, what does yam ih nirikshe hatagata swarupam uh, upon whom in this world by looking those who died attained their what their original form yeah. okay so let's see how proper translates it so what is the last sentence those who saw him on the battlefield of kurukshetra attained the original forms after death yes which means uh, vidhunoti equal to khandayati he destroyed for them what did he destroy for all for them they they're suffering yes sarva dukham so this is the praman first for vidunoti equal to khandayati i hope you are able to understand ha the many times bhagwan shri krishna has taken many other avatars many other incarnations and in all those incarnations you know uh, many of those incarnations there have been many wars and battles fought but never is it mentioned that all those who even glanced at the lord mm. were relieved of all their suffering and they attained their original forms so this is mentioned only in connection with one personality and who is that personality krishna hmm. who is our vidhu so therefore ah. vidhu who equal to vidhunoti which is equal he destroys kim vidhunoti sarva dukham sarva dukham what is the pramana the pramana is shrimad bhagavatam 1939 yes the Or... last line yav iha nirikshya hata gatah swarupam right so you have to remember the pramana ah. i hope you are able to understand so this is the pramana now the first the first meaning of vidhu is established shri jeeva goswami is giving another praman so he is giving from bhagavatam third canto second chapter verse number 21 so we have to see 3 221 okay and so i will pull out this verse from the bhagavatam and then we will see which meaning of viduhu it is describing please repeat after me svayam tvasamya tishaya stradisha sorry prabhu you cut out for a second can you see the verse yes prabhu svayam tvasamya tishaya stradisha svayam tvasamya tishaya stradisha स्वराज्य लक्ष्म्याप्त समस्त काम स्वराज्य स्वराज्य लक्ष्म्याप्त समस्त काम बलिं हरद्भिश चिरलोक पालै बलिं हरद्भिश चिरलोक पालै किरीट कोट्येडित पाद पीठः किरीट कोट्येडित पाद पीठः now 
प्लीज रीड द ट्रांसलेशन स्लोली लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण इज द लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑल काइंड ऑफ थ्रीज एंड इज इंडिपेंडेंटली सुप्रीम बाय अचीवमेंट ऑफ ऑल काइंड ऑफ फॉर्चून He is worshipped by the eternal maintainers of the creation, who offer him the paraphernalia of worship by touching their millions of helmets to his feet. Yes. Can you read that last sentence again? He is worshipped by the eternal maintainers of the creation, who offer him the paraphernalia of worship by touching their millions of helmets to his feet. All the maintainers of the creation all the prajapatis brahma etc they uh-huh. bow down to him and they touch their helmets uh, along with all the gems on their helmets to his lotus feet uh-huh. which indicates only one thing what does it which meaning of vedohu is this indicating he supersedes everybody yes he supersedes everyone i hope you are able to understand ah uh-huh. hmm? so this is one translation hmm? i will show you another translation of that same verse so that sometimes it is better to have two translations so you will get a better perspective hmm. see here can you see this uh-huh. is verse 21 hmm? please read the lord who himself is unsurpassed in excellence without an equal or superior yes and is here, here itself atikramati he ah. supersedes everyone so the verse itself says uh, he is without an equal or yes, so. Super- so the verse is so a samya atishayas samya means equal atishaya means greater but he is a samya atishaya he is ah. without an equal or without somebody greater than him ah right so this that term a samya atishayas is itself indicating that he is without an equal he is without a superior which automatically proves the second meaning that is vidunoti equal to atikramati blissfulness is all types of happiness whose footstool is as if eulogized by the sound on the footstool made by the rests of the crowns of the eternal guardians of the world who bring tributes to him yeah that's such it. words that's, 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 that's it that's it that's it because this it's having 21 and 22 both so this is to him so whose foot platform this is a uh, foot stool means whose foot plat he is keeping his feet on a platform so he is the foot platform the platform on which he is keeping his foot hmm, is eulogized by the sounds made by the crests of the crowns of the eternal guardians of the world who bring tributes to him so this is automatically proving atikramati vidunoti equal to hmm, atikramati atikramati kim atikramati sarvam sarvam cha so the first two meanings of vidu are proved yes i have a question yes just to play devil's advocate um in the sense of like also like in other other places in vedic literature we find like hiranya garbha samavarta tagre and we find we find certain statements that might indicate a certain demigod is superseding everybody hmm even in the even in the puranas so how does one understand this because I mean I'm sure I'm sure I'm Jeeva Goswami elsewhere like in the Sandarbhas my establish the superiority of Bhagavatam but true like one must accept that before accepting like Bhagavatam's praman to be the end all be all I guess right so is there any place where you have prominently heard that Bhagwan Shri Krishna 
was offering his obeisances constantly to any personality in any purana have you heard that bhagwan shri krishna when he was present on this planet he was going and worshiping uh, someone constantly and touching his head to the lotus feet of some personality is no. it we no in the bhagavad gita when krishna declared very clearly that actually when people worship other deities ye pyanya devata bhakta yajante shraddhayan vita te pi maam eva kaunte yajantya vidhi purvakam have you seen that verse they are doing so in an improper way they're... yes so ultimately they are worshiping me but they are doing so uh, out of sense desires in an improper way mm-hmm. right so at that point of time did anyone come and say hey krishna you are speaking incorrectly no no so we have to understand that this is bhagwan shri krishna he is speaking to arjuna and everyone is listening nobody is raising any objection at that point of time hmm. and all the sampradayas accept bhagavad gita so all the sampradayas have to accept the fact that in the bhagavad gita krishna has himself said that worship of any other deity is indirectly worship of him so ah. in that regards also who is who supersedes everyone krishna krishna supersedes everyone okay <laughs> now <clears throat> this was the second meaning now we have to move ahead so shri jiva goswami is giving us another pramana this time from shrimad bhagavatam 92465 okay so we will see this pramana 92465 and we will try to figure out which meaning of vidhu this pramana applies to all right so i'll pull out the verse 92465 and we will see the verse and then we will see the meaning of the verse so please read after me yasyanam makara kundala charu karna yasyanam makara kundala charu karna brajat kapola subhagam savela sahasam भ्राजत कपोल सुभगम सविलास हासम नित्योत्सव न तत्र पर दृश्य पिबंत्यो नित्योत्सव न तत्र पर दृश्य पिबंत्यो नार्यो नराश्च मुदिता कुपिता निमेश्च नार्यो नराश्च मुदिता कुपिता निमेश्च ओके नाउ दिस read the translation slowly krishna's face is decorated with ornaments such as earrings resembling sharks his ears are beautiful his cheeks brilliant and is smiling attractive to everyone whoever sees lord krishna sees a festival his face and body are fully satisfying for everyone to see but the devotees are angry at the creator for the disturbance caused by the momentary blinking of their eyes yes so whoever sees lord krishna sees a festival his face and body are fully satisfying for everyone to see okay so vidhu equals what vidadhati sarvasukham vidadhati he bestows sarva sukham bestows what he bestows all happiness on everyone see here his face and body are fully satisfying for everyone to see right so vidadhati or he bestows sarva sukham so i hope you are able to understand now let's see another translation of the same verse 
can you see 65 this is 92465 same verse translation please read it drinking as it were with their eyes his countenance appearing most beautiful with ears ornamented with alligator shaped earrings and with brilliant cheeks a face beaming with with graceful sportive smiles an eternal seat of ecstasy men and women steeped in delight are never satiated but grow angry with nimi who causes winking and thus deprives them of their happiness and joy right so nimi is the personality who is responsible for blinking of the eyes this is mentioned in shastra so kupita nimeshcha so if they are angry on nimi so our main uh, section is men uh, and women steeped in what delight delight they are fully steeped in delight so karoti what does he ensure sarva sukham sarva sukham and they are never satiated They're so happy but they are ne never satiated so their happiness continues to grow anandam budhivardhanam it continues to grow the karoti sarva sukham he ensures all happiness for them so i hope you are able to understand you remember these pramanas okay because these are very important pramanas Hmm? Vishwanath Chakravarti insists that these were cowherd women of Vrindavan, not others, and the men were Krishna's mates like Subala. And he quotes Ujjwal Nilmani as an authority on this. Hmm. Now, he is giving another praman. This is Shrimad Bhagavatam, ten twenty nine. Forty. So we have to pull out this verse ten twenty nine forty. Now this is from the Rasa Panchadhyay. This is from the five chapters, of, which are pertaining to Sri Rasa Lila. So I will show you this verse and we will sing this verse. Kastriyangate kalapadayat venu gita. Kastriyangate kalapadayat venu gita Sammohitarya charitan chaletra lokyam Sammohitarya charitan chaletra lokyam Trai laukya saubhagamidam cha nirekshya rupam Trai lokya saubhagamidam cha nirikshya rupam Yad godvi jatru mamrikah pula kanya bibhram Yad godvi jatru mamrikah pula kanya bibhram We will see the meaning. We will try to find out which meaning of Vidhu is being indicated here. Please read gradually. Dear Krishna, what woman in all the three worlds wouldn't deviate from religious behavior when bewildered by the sweet, drawn-out melody of your flute? Your beauty makes all three worlds auspicious. Indeed, even the cows, birds, trees, and deer manifest the ecstatic symptom of bodily hair standing on end when they see your beautiful form. Right. So, once again, which meaning do you think is being indicated here? Which meaning of Viduhu is being indicated here? Vidadhati Sarvasokam. He yes. gives all. Yes, he gives all happiness. Okay, now Jiva Goswami is getting two specific types of happiness. And that ah. specific, the highest happiness in this world is that the happiness derived from being attracted to the uh, opposite gender. Okay, so that happiness is, uh, it reaches its pinnacle in Krishna. Because a certain lady may be attracted to, you know, uh, 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 a certain person may be able to attract one lady. Hmm. Certain another person may be able to attract 10 ladies. A certain another person may be able to attract hundreds of ladies. But is there anyone in creation whom all the ladies have been spontaneously attracted to? No. 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 So, this is the pramana which is given here. And therefore, 
let's see the let's see another translation this is verse number 40 yes but Prabhu, i have a question yes just to confirm again this like all the ladies being attracted to this one person spontaneously is that something that only applies to krishna though yes has okay. it been spoken in terms of any other personality i don't think so but i was i was trying to think of like the um i i mean in my head initially i tried thinking of uh of a certain non-devotee that was immediately attracted spontaneously. And the first person that came to mind was uh, Shurpanaka. But she was attractive or she was attracted? No, no. She was attracted to Krishna. I mean, like non-devotee yeah. who was attracted to Krishna spontaneously. That's, so, was... that's, that's fine. But is there any person who themselves are attractive to everyone in the universe? Okay, yeah. Because one who is attractive bestows happiness on others. Who gets yeah. the happiness? The attractive or the attracted? Both. But who gets the happiness? The attractive? Other people get it, but... Ah, so the person who is attracted, they receive... Huh, the, the beautiful gets the happiness or the appreciator of the beauty gets the happiness? The appreciator gets the happiness. That's it. Okay. So, in this case, the first the in in other words, the beautiful person bestows happiness on the person who's attracted to the beauty. I hope you are able to understand. Ah, yes. Okay. In this case, Krishna is that person who is bestowing the highest limit of that happiness on everyone, not only of a few selected people, but on everyone. Ah. Okay. Please read. I was thinking of it in the sense of like when Krishna sees his own reflection and he feels immense like Keep that in your mind. Okay. Keep that in your mind. Okay? Ah. Maybe Chiva Goswami has something to say to you. But please read the translation. Oh darling! Breeds there a woman in all the three worlds who would not swerve from the noble path approved by the elite when she happens to be enchanted with the ravishing, melodious modulations of the music of your flute and chances to be witched by gazing on your form, the most charming in all the three worlds, even a glance which, send, even a glan, glance which sends a thrill of joy through cows, birds, trees, and beasts. <laughs> cows, birds, trees, and beasts. beasts. Right? So, <clears throat> there is a nice verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, uh, which uh, uh, specifies this very nicely. In Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 3.27, uh, there is a verse by Bilva Mangal Thakur being quoted. Uh, please repeat after me. Santvavatara Bahavaha. Santvavatara Bahavaha. Pankajanabhasya sarvato bhadra. Pankajanabhasya sarvato bhadra. Pankajanabhasya sarvato bhadra. Pankajanabhasya sarvato bhadra. Krishna danya kova. Krishna danya kova. Krishna danya kova. Krishna danya kova. Lata Swapi Prema do Bhavati. 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 So, Santu Avatara Bhava. There may be many incarnations. Huh? Pankajanabhasya of the Lotus Naval Lord, Sarvato Bhadra, and these incarnations are all auspicious. There may be many incarnations, Matsya Kurma, Varaha, Vaman, Rasimha, Ram, Balram, etc. But Krishnad Anyaha, except for Krishna, Kova, who is there? That Latasu Api Premado Bhavati. Bhavati, who bestows hmm, Prema? Even upon the creepers, Latasu Api. Is there any other incarnation in this world who bestows Prema even upon the creepers? Even the creepers were bending in Prema. 
when they used to come in contact with Krishna? Is there any other personality, any other incarnation who is bestowing prema even upon the creepers? Tell me. No, no. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this is the beauty of Bhagwan Shri Krishna. So, I hope you are you know, able to understand what is being pointed out in this verse. Okay, mm. now we have seen this Pramana. Shiva Goswami is... You said that, you know, Krishna is sometimes attracted to his own beauty. Right? That's what I meant to say by the... Sometimes the bestower of beauty can also get, like, mm. happiness from his own beauty. Right. So... <clears throat> So the Jiva Goswami points out to another verse, 3 to 12. Okay. So we will go to 3 to 12 and we will see what it is. Can you see the verse? Yanmartya leela upayakam swayoga. Yanmartya leela upayakam swayoga. Maya balam darshayata grihitam. Maya balam darshayata grihitam. Visma panam swasya chasa bhagarthe. Visma panam swasya chasa bhagarthe. Param padam bhushana bhushanangam. Param padam bhushana bhushanangam. Please read the translation slowly. The Lord appeared in the mortal world by his internal potency, Yoga Maya. He came in his eternal form, which is just suitable for his pastimes. These pastimes were wonderful for everyone. Wait, slow. This is the sentence. These uh, pastimes. These pastimes were wonderful for everyone, even for those proud of their own opulence, including the Lord himself. In his right. form, the Lord of Vaikuntha. Did Jeev Goswami read your mind or something? Yeah, it's magic. <laughs> okay. So, this is what is being pointed out here by Srila Jeev Goswami. And we will read another translation so that, you know, it is confirmed that Krishna is so attractive he gives such happiness that he is able to give happiness to himself by his own form. Huh. Which means he is a self-sufficient uh, entity of happiness. He doesn't need to derive happiness from an external source. His happiness huh. can come from his own self. I hope you are able to understand this. Hmm? Hmm. So this is another translation. It, this is verse 12. Same verse, translation. It was a form. It was a form which was useful for activities in imitation of human beings, which he assumed, showing the power of his yoga maya. That's okay. Now, now is the most important part. It was the highest peak of perfect beauty. Beauty, yes. And sublimity, parts of which beautified even the ornaments and the wonder to him also. Right. <laughs> so, this is Bhagavan Shri Krishna Vidadhati equal to Karoti. Kim Karoti? Sarva Sukham. Sarva Sukham. For everyone he bestows. Huh. So everyone should also include whom? Himself. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. That is being proved here. Hmm. Now, Sri Jiva Goswami gives another Praman. You must have seen this Praman. What is this Praman? This is Ete Chamsha Kala Pumsa, Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam, Indra yeah. Yurakulam. Yes, so 1328 Bhagavatam. Can you tell me approximately what is the translation of only this section, Ete Chamsha Kala Pumsa, Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam? So this, this, uh, this is the part of Bhagavatam that describes all of the other um, expansions of Krishna previously. And then mm -hmm. it says, Ete Chamsha Kala Pumsa Krishna Subhagavan Swami. All of these expansions, forms of the Lord, are ultimately um, the original form is ultimately Krishna. He's the Swayam Bhagavan. Right. So, what does 
Srila Jeeva Goswami want to indicate by this? That Which Krishna, man? he supersedes everyone. That's okay. But it, here it's not everyone. Everyone, ha that has been done already. I, I remember previously also he says that Krishna Swayam Bhagavan. I'm forgetting for what he says Krishna Swayam Bhagavan for. That's a, we, right now we are focusing on four meanings of Vedu. No, no, I'm saying in the description for the four meanings, Prabhu, he says that Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. For one. First is uh, Vidadhati uh, uh, Vidunoti Sarva Dukkham that he destroys all suffering. Uh, and second is Ati Kramati uh, Sarvamcha. And then third is Vidadhati Sarva Sukham, he bestows all happiness. And Sarvamcha Eti, and he bestows everything. Huh. So, which of the four meanings is being proved by this Pramana? Wouldn't it be Prabhu that with the he gives he bestows everything? Yes, he bestows everything because this why I'm part of it. Yes, everything that has been bestowed by all the other previous incarnations, including the three Vishnus, Karanadoka Shai Vishnu, Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu, Shirodaka Shai Vishnu. These three were mentioned at the beginning of the third chapter, first canto, third chapter. Huh. Yes, so then these three are responsible for the entire material creation, agreed or not? Yes, Prabhu. Hmm. So, when these three are responsible for the entire material creation, I'll show you because in 1.3.1, it begins not directly with the incarnations. It begins first with whom? So in 1.3.1, it begins with the verse, Jagrihe Paurusham Rupam Bhagavan Mahadadibhi Sambhutam Shodasha Kamalam Adav Loka Sisrakshaya. So what was, what is the translation? In the beginning of the creation, the Lord first expanded himself in the universal form of the Purusha incarnation and manifested all the ingredients for the material creation. Yeah. Ah. He manifested all the Karoti Sarvam. He did everything for material creation. But ultimately, this form was also a portion of the portion of the original personality. Etecha Amsha Kalaha Pumsaha Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. Because in this very chapter, this is 1.3.1, .1, and in 1.3.29, the statement will be made. The Mahavakya will be made that all these are portions, but uh, portions are portions of portions. Uh, so 1.3.28, but Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. So either plenary portions or portions of plenary portions, but Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. So what the first verse was specifying was actually done by whom? The, the first verse, sorry, Prabhu, was yeah. Oh, yeah, it was actually done by Krishna on the Krishna. Because... Right? Because the form which did that, that form was a portion of the plenary portion of Krishna. So I hope you are able to understand. Karoti Sarvam Chaiti. All four meanings have been uh, proved by giving pramanas from Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, is there any meaning remaining of Vidhu left to be explained? No, I think we did all four. All four? Actually. Vidhunoti Sarva Dukkham. Uh, that was when Bhishma says that those who saw you, uh, yeah. they attained their original forms. Vidunoti uh, equal to Atikramati Sarvamcha, he supersedes everyone. We saw that when we saw yeah, when we saw that all the creators of the universe are bowing down and touching their helmets to his lotus feet. Okay, then Vidhu equal to Vidadhati Sarva Sukham. We saw many Pramanas of Krishna bestowing happiness. Specific types of happiness upon ladies, and he bestows happiness even upon himself. Yeah. And we also saw the fourth one, which is this one, Etecha Amshakala Pumsaha Krishna Stubhagavan Swayam. So we have seen pramanas for all four meanings of Vidhu. 
any pramana any meaning left to be proved other than the four yes there are only four huh. so any any meaning left to be proved of vidu no all so all four have been giving pramanas yes so all mm -hmm. four have been proved but shrila jeeva goswami finally gives another pramana so this is shrimad bhagavatam 10 90 48 and we will see this verse and then we will try to see the meaning of this verse and why did jiva goswami give another verse when he has already proved all four right so let's see this is 10 90 48 please uh, sing after me jayati janani vaso devaki janmavado jayati janani vaso devaki janma vado yadu bara parishad swair durbhirasyan adharmam yadu bara parishad swair durbhirasyan adharmam sthira chara vrichi nagna susmita shri mukhena sthira chara vrichi nagna susmita shri mukhena vrajapura banitana vardhayan kamadevam Vrajapura Vanitana Vardhayan Kama Devam. Yes. Now, slowly and gradually read the translation of the verse. Lord Sri Krishna is he who is known as Janani Vasa, the ultimate resort of all living entities, and who is also known as Devaki Nandana or Yashoda Nandana. the son of devaki and yashoda he is the guide of the yadu dynasty and with his mighty arms he kills everything inauspicious as well as every man who is pious by his presence he destroys all things inauspicious for all living entities moving and inert his blissful smiling face always increases the lusty desires of the gopis of vrindavan may he be all glorious and happy okay okay i <laughs> for what purpose is shri jeeva goes i mean quoting this verse it's kind of encapsulated everything else in the one verse yes <laughs> it's kind of it has encapsulated all four meanings of vidhu in one verse <laughs> in one verse <laughs> okay let's see another translation huh? please read victorious is lord krishna who is the sole refuge of all people and abides in each of them as their in indwelling soul as a matter of fact he is eternal and birthless that he incarnated himself from devaki is a matter of ignorant talk only though he is attended upon by prominent yadava warriors It is with the might of his arms that he annihilated all unrighteousness. He completely destroys the sins of all the mobile and immobile, grass, creepers, trees, and other beings. With his resplendently beautiful countenance and winning smiles, he enhances love in the women of Raja and the cities and makes them attain to moksha by subduing carnal love. so <clears throat> first meaning of viduhu was viduhu equal to vidunoti equal to khandayati he destroy sarva dukham all distress is that given in this verse yes he completely destroys the sins of all so this is the first meaning of viduhu he destroys all distress because it what leads to distress what is the cause of distress are you asking me prabhu yes what is the cause of distress cause of distress is uh, not developing attachment to krishna in the material world what is the cause of distress papa or sin is the cause of distress 
so he destroys all sin he completely destroys all sins of everyone so by destroying all the sins of everyone he destroys what for them suffering yes so this is the first meaning of vidu what was the second meaning atikramati sarvam cha iti and he supersedes everyone so he is attended upon by prominent yadava warriors and with the might of his arms he annihilated all unrighteousness so he superseded everyone all the yadavas were also because the yadavas were the topmost in the creation uh, all the demigods had appeared in the yadu dynasty <laughs> and all the yadavas were paying obeisances to him so atikramati sarvam che uh, then vidhu equal to vidathati he bestows sarva sukham all happiness uh, where is this given he enhances the love in the women of vraja and the cities hmm? and vidadhati equal to karoti sarvam cha iti fourth meaning he does everything uh, this is given here and he abides he is the sole refuge of all people and he abides in each of them as their indwelling soul so whatever is done by anyone and everyone is actually sanctioned by him as the super soul so it is he who is the actual doer of everything so all four meanings are encapsulated in a single pramana in this particular verse okay i hope you are able to understand that's so wonderful that's i was thinking about it prabhu because back in the day they didn't have translations or anything they were just reading through the pramanas right it's the reader at that time would have been reading through all the pramanas and like okay this for this this for this this for this then finally reached this person who was like oh this for everything <laughs> right but there is also another purpose in quoting hmm. this verse the purpose in quoting this is you have to remember the original verse of shila rupa goswami what is the original verse of shila rupa goswami that we are discussing akhila rasamrita murti hi prasrimar ruchi rudh ka palihi kalita shyama lalito radha preyan vidhur vidhur jayati jayati hmm. and that same term jayati has also appeared in this verse i hope you are able to understand <laughs> yeah so somebody may ask that vidhu has all these qualities we agree but where is it given in shastra that vidhu jayati uh, we saw what is do you remember what is the meaning of jayati jayati means that he supersedes everyone sarvotkarshena vartate he reigns above everyone else so where is this jayati given in shastra so this jayati is given in this verse so that which shri rupa goswami said radha prayan vidur jayati jayati equals sarvotkarshena vartate he reigns above everyone else this jayati is also directly mentioned in shastra in this verse all right so uh, hence proved everything has been successfully proved hmm now shila jeeva goswami continues ahead hmm? atha atha means again i have told you what is the meaning of atha atha hmm. is a mangalvachi shabda it is a term which denotes auspiciousness and which denotes that something new is commencing now uh, so hmm. now we understood what is vidu what are the meanings of vidu what are the pramanas for these meanings of vidu okay now shri jeeva goswami says atha now tat tat utkarsha hetum tat tat means huh, these specific causes of utkarsha utkarsha means superiority of krishna huh, these specific causes of superiority swarupa lakshanam ah the swarupa lakshana of vidu Uh, what is swarupa lakshana what is tatastha lakshana this also i will specify uh, ah these are being specified in this verse akhila rasamrita murti okay so now jiva goswami is saying atha tat tat utkarsha hetum 
Now, Krishna has Utkarsha. Utkarsha means he supersedes everyone. He reigns about everyone. Okay? But, Utkarsha Hetum, what is the cause of that? The Swarupa Lakshana. What is the main characteristic of that particular personality is known as Swarupa Lakshana. There are two types of characteristics in Shastra. Okay? So, there are two types of Lakshanas. Two types of Lakshanas. Lakshana means characteristics. One is known as Swarupa Lakshana. Okay? And another is known as Tatastha Lakshana. One is known as Swarupa Lakshana. Another is known as Tatastha Lakshana. Swarupa Lakshana is, can be approximately translated as inherent characteristic. Okay. And Tatastha Lakshana can be said as a characteristic uh, which is, which you can say, transitory. Characteristic. For example, I will make this very clear through an example. First, we have to understand what is the meaning of Swarupa Lakshana and Tatastha Lakshana. For example, if somebody asks me that Hari Parshad Das, can you tell me where is Shri Vatsa Prabhu's home? Where is Shastra Shahar Prabhu, Brother Prabhu's home? So somebody asks me, where is your home? And I tell them, oh, it's very easy. You go to ISV. You find the home on which the maximum number of parrots are sitting. That is our Sri Vatsa Prabhu's home. Okay. So, have I not given a characteristic of your home? Huh. But is this characteristic Swarupa Lakshan an inherent characteristic or Tatastha Lakshan, transitory characteristic? It's a Tatastha Lakshan. Yes. Because let's say if tomorrow all the parrots fly away from the top <laughs> of your home, will it not remain your home? It will still be. So, Tatastha Lakshanas or transitory characteristics are those characteristics which distinguish an entity, but they may or may not be always present in that entity. I hope you are able to understand. Mm. Hmm? So, these are such characteristics which distinguish an entity. These characteristics also distinguish that entity from other entities. Hmm? The purpose of giving characteristics is to distinguish that entity from other entities. Right? If I have to tell where is your home, so, I have to give some distinguishing characteristics, Lakshanas. Huh. So, Lakshana is basically a distinguishing characteristic. But the distinguishing characteristics are can be transitory. And they may distinguish, but they may not be always present in that particular object or person. Huh. And the second type of Lakshana is Swarup Lakshana. For example, somebody asks me, where is your home? And if I say that home, which is registered in the name of Shri Vatsa is Shri Vatsa's home. You will see the nameplate, it will be written Shri Vatsa Puranam. So that home is your home. Now, this characteristic that I specified, is it an inherent characteristic or a transitory characteristic? Inherent. It's yeah. Yes, because it won't change. It won't change. And if it changes, it will no longer remain your home. Huh, yeah. <laughs> right? If this changes, it will still remain your home. Hmm? If the parrots fly away, it will still remain your home. But if this changes, it will no longer be your home. So, huh. this is the difference between Sarup Lakshana and Tatastha Lakshana. Okay. Now, Sri Jeev Goswami says, utkarsha ketum. Now we have to specify the utkarsh, the superiority, the glory of Krishna. And Rupa Goswami is specifying that by giving Swarupa Lakshanam aha, by aha, by specifying which Lakshana? Swarupa Lakshana. Ha. And Swarupa Lakshana is specified by the term Akhila Rasamrita Murtihi. The Swarupa Lakshana of Viduhu is what? Akhila Rasamrita Murtihi. Okay. That's... Yes, I hope you are able to understand. 
Yeah. Hmm? That term, Akhila Rasamrita Murti, is, uh, is, 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 is an inherent characteristic of Vidhu or is a transitory characteristic of Vidhu? It's an inherent characteristic. Yes. If that characteristic is lost, or it will never be lost. But if it is lost, can we call it Vidhu? No. no. So Swarupa Lakshanam Aha. So his Akhila Rasamrita Murti is which Lakshana of Vidhu? Swarupa Lakshana. Swarupa Lakshana. So then he is breaking down the term. What is Akhila Rasamrita Murti? So this is the breakdown of Akhila Rasamrita Murti. Okay, please read after me. Akhila Rasa. Akhila Rasa. Vakshyamana. Vakshyamana. Shantadya. Shantadya. Dvadasha Yasmin. Dvadasha Yasmin. Tadrisham Amritam. Tadrisham Amritam. Paramananda Eva. Paramananda Eva. Murtir Yasya. Murtir Yasya. Saha. Saha. Okay. So what is the, the, our term is Akhila Rasa Amrita Murti. So we will put this in a separate section. Okay. So our term is Akhila Rasa Amrita Murti. And this combines to give Akhila Rasa Amrita Murti. When it combines with the rules of Sanskrit grammar, it, huh. it becomes Akhila Rasa Amrita Murti. But the breakdown is Akhila Rasa Amrita Murti. Hmm? So this, what does Sri Jiva Goswami says? Akhila Rasa. All the Rasas. Akhila Rasa means what? All, hmm? the, rasas. All the Rasas. Vaksha Manaha, which will be specified ahead in the literature. Which literature? Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu. Hmm. What are those Rasas? Shanta Adya, Shanta etc. Hmm? Hmm? How many total number of rasas? Dvadasha. How many total were the rasas? Twelve. Twelve. Yasmin uh, are present in who in that particular personality. Hmm. So Akhila Ras has been done. Hmm? Akhila Rasa. All the rasas. Total how many rasas? Total twelve rasas are there. Twelve rasas are in that personality. And Tadrisham huh? and such an Amritam or par Amritam means Nectarian or Paramananda, the personification of the greatest happiness huh? is Amrita. And that is Eva Murti, that itself is personified. Yes, that itself is personified in him. Therefore, he is Akhila Rasa Amrita Murti. So, Akhila Rasa, all 12 Rasas, they are Amrita. They are the highest happiness. And this highest happiness of the 12 Rasas, okay, that itself is a Murti, that itself is personified. In which personality? In Viduhu. Viduhu. So this is an adjective of which personality? Uh, this is all oh, this is all an adjective of Krishna. Vidu. Yes. But Akhila Rasamrita Murtihi is a Lakshana. It is a, uh, it is a characteristic. Prasamara Ruchi Rutha Taraka Pali is also a Lakshana. Kalita Shyama Lalito is also a Lakshana. Radha Priyan is also a Lakshana. Uh, and the Lakshya, the indicated, is Vidhu. Uh, uh -huh. And what about him, Jayati? At least one verb is needed. Okay. So, amongst all the Lakshanas, amongst all the distinguishing characteristics, which is the Swarup Lakshana? Hare Krishna. Yeah. Amongst all the Lakshanas, amongst all the distinguishing characteristics of Viduhu, which is the Swarup Lakshana? Akhila uh, Rasamrita Murti. Yes. I have a question then, Prabhu. Yes. What about Radha Prayan? We will see that. But okay. at least we are convinced that Akhila Rasamrita Murti is... Okay. I am convinced. Yes. We will see whether the others are Swarup Lakshana or Tatastha Lakshana. Okay. Ah. So, but first is Akhila Rasamrita Murti is the first Swarup Lakshana of Viduhu. 
Okay. Now, Srila Jiva Goswami is not going to stop here. He is going to see, give, give pramanas of, of how Krishna is Akhila Rasamrita Murti. Okay. So, that he is going to give pramanas, but we will do that next time. Okay. So, yes. yes. Anything to ask? Not currently, Prabhu. I was just thinking that I feel like without Radha Prayan, Viduhu isn't really, it's a different person completely. Okay. But we will see that. Hmm? Okay. Whether what is, uh, whether all of these are Swarup Lakshanas, whether some are Swarup Lakshanas, some are Tatastha Lakshanas. Now, but at least we have how many Swarup Lakshanas till now? So far we have one. Right. And you understood clearly what is Swarupa Lakshana and what is Tatastha Lakshana. And I gave you an example of your own home. Okay. So and the, the registration. Yes. All right. So yeah. we will pause here. So we saw the four meanings of Viduhu and the Pramanas which certify these four meanings of Viduhu. And then that one Pramana which is all inclusive jayati janani vaso devaki janvavado and that one pramana also has the term jayati in it so we saw that one pramana and finally sri jiva goswami is now into analyzing the other adjectives of viduhu and the first one he is analyzing is akila rasamrita mukti we have seen that all right so we'll pause here next time we will see the pramanas for akila rasamrita mukti okay so i will Indicate that we have stopped here by saying, by putting a marker here. All right. So, this is the point from where we have to continue next time. All right. Thank you very much, Shastra Sara Prada Prabhu. Last time you were Srivatsa Prabhu, <laughs> but today you are initiated and you are Shastra Sara Prada Prabhu. Thank you very much for. Uh, kindly listening patiently to me and we will conclude this session here. Okay? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna.